Hi, this is Hildron here from the CC, and today I'm going to be going over Windows 8 Release Preview. We will be doing a live stream demo of this on our next live show this Friday, and I just thought in advance I'd give you a little demo to show you some minor changes and some more significant changes in the new build. So I'm going to show you that, and you can also check out our blog, and just follow us on Twitter, and you'll get some updates on that as well. We'll post screenshots and other things if you want some more information on Windows 8 Release Preview. You can also get this right from Microsoft's website. The 32-bit download, I believe, is only 2.5 gigs. It's not that bad. All right, so let's take a look. Okay, so here you can see the start screen, and this is the Metro interface for those of you who are not entirely familiar with that. That's what Microsoft calls it. So the cool thing is Windows isn't all Metro. I mean, Metro is great for tablets and everything, but there still is the desktop that is available. But the bad thing is there are certain things that only work in the Metro environment, and there are a lot of restrictions in that, like I've discussed in previous videos. So I might go over some things that were in the last build, but I want to try to focus on new things only. I'll do that as best I can. So let's take a look at the desktop. There were some changes with the normal interface. So if I open up like an Explore window, for example, you can kind of see the design's a little bit different. Arrow is no longer in the system. You can see it doesn't have like those gradients or anything anymore. It's just more of a kind of a clean kind of glass look. And if you actually go to Personalize, you can change this up a bit. And you can also see parts of the Explorer interface change. So if I like do this, you can see those buttons are different. Uh, the ribbon looks a little bit different. So there's some nice little changes inside the UI itself. And I can go to Window Color here, and I can, I can actually like turn this up. And as you can see, it looks different than the current Arrow design in Windows 7. It doesn't have those distracting gradients or anything. It actually looks a lot cleaner. I actually do like that. And you can also see the buttons also look a little bit different. They look more square, more Metro style. That's really nice. So overall, I do like the Metro appearance, in my opinion. I think it's pretty cool. But the restrictions with the Metro environment aren't really the greatest. Okay, so that was one of the new things. In addition, they did some updates to the apps themselves. They made some minor tweaks to the interface and things for like the music app and the photos app. So I can actually go to the photos app here and you can see the photos in your library. And this is an example of a Metro application. And one of the things that I was talking about restriction wise is it's not really the most intuitive or easy to view interface. Because, you know, for example, these thumbnails are huge and I can't really resize these. Unless I... Oh my goodness, they added a new option in there. Oh my goodness, look at that. Um, okay, that was not there last time. Well, hey, you get my first reaction on that. Okay, so that was a good new thing. But anyway, usually Metro apps have this kind of sideways scrolling style, and you can't fit a lot on the screen at once. But eh, I swear that was not there last time. But yeah, that's pretty awesome. You can actually go out into more of a grid view. Okay. What hell? Look at that. Anyway, okay, so that's nice. Oh, uh, you can go back to the start screen here. They still have the zoom out button on the start screen. That was there before. It's just a little bit of a different icon. So I can make groups here. I could rearrange the groups just by dragging and dropping. I can do things like... I can maybe name this something. I could call this... Web. Like... Just for weather and stuff. So I can do name. And if I zoom in, I've got web. So I've got like my all my news feeds... Uh, weather and stuff all pulled from the web. I could maybe throw Internet Explorer in there if I wanted to. Maybe put that to the top. So kind of like that. So you can still do that. That's really awesome. And you can still get to the charms menu. You have to know your gestures, of course, or your keyboard shortcuts because there's not really an easy way to view menus, and that's one of the unintuitive things with Windows 8. And that's one of the things that a lot of people do not like about this. Things aren't really that easy to find all the time. You need to know gestures and keyboard shortcuts. Like, you can't see the start button, kind of like in the last build. You have to go down to the corner and pull up the start button there. And if you go down to the corner, pull up the start button, and then go up, you still get your sidebar to switch between your Metro screens. Okay, so yeah, I can go in this corner and pull up the charms menu, so I can toggle between the start screen. I could open up a search field, go to settings, and then I can like hit change PC settings, and that brings me to the Metro control panel. And one of the new things I'd like to note is with the start screen, you get a lot more color options now, which is really nice. So I can change it. I can change the background to this gray and keep the tiles like at this blue color, the default tile as a blue color. And I can make that a green. I can make it an orange. I can do all these different colors. And, you know, this one actually looks kind of neat. I do like that. But I like my kind of 
turquoise-ish look the best right there. So yeah, they have a lot more color options, which is really cool. And if you go to apps like, for example, let's say, let's go to the news app, because that's actually a new application. It's just like a news feed kind of thing. And this is the interface. Once again, Metro, kind of like side-to-side -side scrolling like that, which is pretty good for tablets, but I don't think it's the greatest for computers, because it's, it's kind of hard to fit a lot on the screen at once. I mean, in the other builds, it was much more tricky. In this build, you do have the the little minus button so you can zoom out a bit. So that, that is a useful thing. That is one good Metro improvement that they made. But here's another one. Uh, it's kind of tricky still to find where to get your menus and stuff. You have to know to actually right-click and pull up your toolbars and stuff. But this is actually a new type of toolbar design. They have bigger icons like this in the toolbar, and that's really nice. I can just switch between, like, sources, for example, and I can get all these sources to stream news from. Or I can right-click and go back to trends, and then I can get a trends view of everything that is trending in the news feeds. So that is a new thing they did, and they didn't just do that in the new news application, but they also did that in an update to the stocks application. So I can go into stocks here, for example. The finance application is actually called because it's more than just stocks. And if I right-click, yes, I do get this normal toolbar down here still with the little circular icons that was in the previous build, but I also do get that new... Um, top toolbar as well where I can switch between views like I can switch to currencies or I can switch to rates or I can just switch to if I just want to see my stock watch list I can just go to that too so that is a, that is a new thing they made to the Metro interface they made a nice change with that so those are two pretty significant changes to the Metro interface I I like that okay uh, I believe flash support is also built into the system now I, I don't know if it works in the Metro version of IE, but we could find that out. But I'm sure if you open up, like, the desktop version here, you go to, like, YouTube.com. Let me just type that in. Let's just click on... Actually, this is, um, this is already using Flash, that ad right there. So that shows you that is already Flash enabled. So Flash is built into the system. Unlike in the previous builds, they took it out. Uh, let's try the... Uh, the Metro version. And this is another example of a limitation of Metro. If you're in IE for like the computer itself, the desktop, not not the Metro interface, if you're in the regular version of IE, let's just say, and you want to get to that full screen immersive experience, you can't just switch in between them. You actually have to start a new session in the Metro version of IE. So that's one of the restrictions of Metro that I, I don't like too much. But uh, let's uh, test out Flash inside here. It will still, of course, like keep track of your history and stuff, like what it just did right there, but it won't resume your session. Okay, Flash works in there too, it looks like. Let me just verify that. Um, oh, that's actually just a picture. Ha <laughs> ha, I tried to fool us. Okay, I don't think Flash works directly in the Metro version of IE. I believe it still supports HTML5, but it, it does not support it properly. Uh, I could do a test run... Let me just go to a website that I made that I know has HTML5 in it. It works fine in every browser but IE. Let's see if it works in this version. No, not at all. It kind of worked. <laughs> you can still get to your buttons at least. But anyway, yes. Um, Let's see. This looks like... Oh, that's what Metro menus look like. Oh, it says about Flash Player. Huh. Okay, so it looks like it does support Flash, but uh, that ad was just a picture because it switched automatically on us. Okay, so those are some basic changes to the release preview. I'm sure there's quite a few others that I'm missing. I can't do a whole lot with, like, mail and contacts and calendars or whatever because I don't have a Microsoft account. But if you have a Microsoft account and you want to try out this, uh, cons uh, not consumer preview, but release preview, go for it. That will give you probably a better Windows experience. Okay, let me know what you think about this updated version of Windows 8 because I personally think it's better than the consumer preview. I... Could go a little more into some Metro restrictions, but I, I went over some in this video, and you could probably see some in my other um, Windows videos about the consumer preview and the developer preview. So let me know what you think, and I'd like to hear your opinions. Okay, so let's uh, shut this down. We'll go to our charms menu. Nice little glitched up clock right there. Settings, power, and shutdown. Yes, it's a multi-step process to shut down, but hey, it works. All right, that's all for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.